Hello. So I get this question all the time. I figured I'd finally just record it uh, during my drive of all things. Uh, and that is, what is a technical evangelist? So now several companies have them and they might have different terminology or names for them, but uh, I'll cover exactly what this is. So my name is David Voiles. I'm a technical evangelist at Microsoft, which sounds like a religious zealot. Really, it's a developer who talks to developers. And I'm sure if you ask different evangelists, they probably give you similar or occasionally different um, answers to what we do. So I'm in Philadelphia. I work with one of my peers, Amanda Lang, who's also here in Philadelphia. And for the most part, Microsoft has roughly 60 of us across the US, where we have several of us in each major city. Um, other companies, such as Google, call them developer advocates. Amazon has technical evangelists as well. And the term actually came from Apple in the 1980s, and it was started by a gentleman named Guy Kawasaki, uh, who was a technical evangelist for the Apple II. He's now a very well-known venture capitalist and fantastic public speaker. So if you really want to understand how evangelism works, I would suggest taking a look at some of the YouTube videos that he's put together. Again, his name is Guy Kawasaki, and he has several fantastic books, and it's largely about what evangelism is. And what it comes down to is enchanting audiences, getting developers on board with what you're doing. So uh, at Microsoft, we fall under the sales umbrella, although we have nothing to sell. I have no sort of currency exchange. I have no product to sell. Instead, the way I look at it is it's our role to get other developers on board to be building technology and fortunately Microsoft gives us a lot of freedom and flexibility to do that um, I absolutely love this job because um, our bosses and peers let us remain autonomous so my boss is in Atlanta I'm in Philadelphia and for the most part you kind of take care and manage yourself it's like having your own startup within inside the ma massive corporation that is Microsoft itself um, our roles change every year or specifically our focus. So one year it might be getting people on board with you know, Windows 8 applications or Windows 10 apps. Um, another year um, it might be um, giving talks to a community. So that might be like meetup groups and universities and things like that. Um, and another focus may be on building out proof of concepts and prototypes with uh, partners. Now, a partner can be a startup, a partner can be a Fortune 500. Uh, again, that's part of the flexibility that they afford us. So, for the most part, I find that uh, each of us is kind of hired for a specialty or your, your specific background. So, for example, my passion is around um, gaming, web technologies. So, I try to focus most of my talks around those key areas. Um, although, I will tell you, one of the key requirements for becoming an evangelist is the ability to learn and to learn quickly. So what that means is um, often the engineering or the calm product groups will come out with something new and they'll give us information on this latest and greatest product that's about to be released or maybe has been out for some time. And it's our role to disseminate that information to the public. So that means going to things like Microsoft's Build Conference or Connect. Uh, we might hold workshops at our own facilities. So we have the Microsoft Reactor in Philadelphia, which we just opened. New York, we opened two weeks ago. And San Francisco, which has been open for about one year. So look at our role essentially as uh, building up the tech community within our region. Uh, if you caught us 10 years ago, you know, you'd see it's very much .NET heavy and got to be Microsoft technology. Today, it's completely different. I was in Raleigh with several of my coworkers last week. We were giving a talk on um, open source technology and what Microsoft is doing with open source. And this was at All Things Open conference in Raleigh. And it was a very interesting change from, again, 10 years ago, but even 12 years ago, Steve Ballmer, our former CEO, looked at um, open source as though we're cancer. But now we see it's leading the world. And in fact, Microsoft is the number one contributor of open source technology on GitHub, ahead of every other company. So we have more of our engineers open sourcing as much technology as we legally can, but also building on and contributing to the open source technologies that you or your companies are building on too. So it's a great uh, benefit that's reciprocal. So we're building stuff to help you out, you're building stuff to help us out, and essentially our role is to, to help build the tech ecosystem. So a great way of looking at it is rising ships, or rising tides raise all ships, right? So if we build the tech ecosystem within our cities, there's no reason for us to have to sell or, or push our technology or hardware on you. Instead, I find that by just helping people out, by um, listening to their issues, helping them resolve um, what it is they're working on, um, 
they naturally will come back to us and, and say, I want to adopt your technology. I want to help out. I absolutely love this role because uh, there's tons of flexibility. There's very diff It's very difficult to describe what we do on a day-to-day -day basis because each day is different. Um, I'm on vacation this week, but uh, in previous weeks, you know, I might go to the local Cocoa Heads, that's iOS developer meetup at the Apple Store. I was there two weeks ago speaking on how to write C-sharp applications with Xamarin on iOS and Android. So a couple years ago, you probably wouldn't find Microsoft at an iOS developer meetup giving talks on um, how to write mobile apps. But today, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, other days, uh, I might be managing the Reactor, which is, again, our new community or co-working space we have in Philadelphia that we've built alongside many other partners, including 76 Capital and the University City Science Center. And our role at the Reactor is, is again, to build the tech ecosystem in this area. I grew up on Long Island, uh, Long Island New York, where um, technology really wasn't prevalent. So most of my friends became cops and firefighters, teachers, hairdressers. Um, so it was a lot of blue collar work. I was a construction worker for several years. And when I compare and contrast that with my friends who grew up on the West Coast, you know, specifically in the Bay Area, they you know, came out of school and their parents or friends or everyone around them was in tech. They were programming, they were making things. Code was not even an option for me. I did not know this was a career. Um, so part of what we're doing is to help bridge that gap right, between the tech haves and the tech have nots. So that means uh, all of our workshops aren't necessarily like super low level and deep or, or complicated with technology. Often it is intro or just getting started with different areas of technology. So I might, uh, you know, learn some you know nice new web framework, try to understand it fast, build uh, projects around it, blog about it, do a podcast about it, and then share it with the world. And most recently, again, I'm on vacation this week, but I love coding, so I've been learning React, which is Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Facebook's uh, open source front end framework. It's really just a view for the web. Uh, I'm really enjoying it so far, but. Uh, Again, I, I love trying to learn new things and then teach them to others as I go along too. That's, if, if that's what you like to do, this job is fantastic. So again, it boils down to the ability to speak in public and also to build technical projects. Our big focus largely has been around the cloud as well. Um, the cloud is not necessarily new, it's been around for nearly 10 years at this point, but everybody's adopting it. Everyone from banks to startups to uh, Fortune 50s, everyone and their brother. And a key advantage of the cloud is, again, it's breaking down that barrier that was there for, for so many people for so long. And by that I mean, if you want to have a startup today and you need you know, maybe 100 computers to serve your web content and build APIs on, on top of, or take advantage of the GPUs, the graphic processing units inside of them, it's going to be very, very expensive for you to get started, right? Maybe tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. But now, the cloud, you can rent and only pay for what you're using for this hardware. Imagine it's like leasing a car for a very short period of time, where you say, I want to test something out. You can easily do that, build it up all through code. We manage the hardware and uh, you can tear it down at any point too. So that wall is completely broken down. No longer do you have to go out and buy this hardware, assemble it. If you want to manage an operating system, you can. If you don't, or you just want to manage your code, do that just as well. Uh, and I've noticed that there's a huge demand for developers to understand the cloud, regardless of whose cloud or platform you want to adopt. I'm not going to tell you which one works best for you, but understanding the concepts of the cloud, how it works, how to build technology on it, such as hosting websites or building APIs um, or hosting virtual machines. Um, there's a lot of power in that. It doesn't necessarily mean you're taking away someone's job. Instead, it means you're becoming more efficient. So where it may have taken an IT professional uh, a day to spin up two or three servers, now one developer can spin up 100 servers. So you can hit massive scale in a very, very short period of time. So it's another part of our job. Learning the cloud quickly, not necessarily the whole thing because it's very large, but um, small parts of the cloud and then trying to get people on board with that. So often that means just making really fun projects on your own which people naturally gravitate towards, and then you can uh, work with them on that. So, for example, last summer, uh, I ported this game called Night Trap. It was an old Sega CD game that came out in the, recorded in the 80s, made in the early 90s, and uh, I ported that from 68K assembly to JavaScript, 
put it up on the web and open sourced my code and a bunch of gaming uh, blogs and journalists picked up on it. Developers reached out to me and said, this is awesome. That is the rewarding part of this job where I get to make really fun things and then teach the community how to make these things. So if you like to tinker, if you like to write code, if you like to build new technology, work with the latest and greatest, this is a great job for you. And then finally, I'll say uh, public speaking is a huge part of it. So that means going down to meetups, user groups, universities, uh, and talking in public. So um, that could be anything from you know a group with 15 or 20 people, or maybe you're in a room with two or 300 people. You gotta be able to quickly adapt, learn how to speak, um, give effective presentations. That means not death by PowerPoint, but actually you know, showing some code um, and being very interactive with an audience, right? You wanna drive engagement, have them interested, kind of keep them on the edge of their seat the entire time. Uh, not everyone is, is born that way to be a natural speaker, but fortunately we have things like YouTube where you can go on and see how, uh, how to become an effective speaker. I mentioned this before, Guy Kawasaki would be a fantastic person to go learn that from. Um, so that's really what I have to say about uh, technical evangelism. If you have any other questions or you'd like to learn more, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm very accessible on the internet. My name is Dave Voiles, so my website is davevoiles.com. My uh, Twitter handle is at Dave Voiles. Uh, and if you want, you can feel free to send me an email. It's just dvoiles at microsoft.com. Thank you.